almost instantly. Gotta love him. Ladies and gentlemen, our next uh, speaker is a uh, gentleman who's a uh, talk show host, a columnist for the Washington Times, cast member of the upcoming Atlas 3 uh, movie, uh, Atlas Shrug 3 movie, and a guy who I call friend, and who calls me, um, you're that, I uh, met you, I just... Ladies and gentlemen, Rusty Humphreys. very, very clear, okay? Yelling, screaming, heckling, cheering, and animal noises are all heavily encouraged. Don't be afraid to get a little rowdy! Really? That's as rowdy as you can get. Thank you, I appreciate it. Okay, before I get started with my little chat, I am in a new movie. Uh, it's coming out on September 12th called Atlas Shrug 3, who is John Gold. Anybody heard of a book called Atlas Shrug? Okay. Um, as you can tell by looking at me, I am John Galt. <laughs> but they asked me to bring you a little clip that uh, the folks at the, the uh, production company made. So let me play you a little clip here of uh, getting folks ready for Atlas Shrug 3, who is John Galt. Atlas Distribution Company. <laughs> so, let's talk about the last time we were sick. Who wants to go first? Anyway. Unfortunately, a lot of people go, yeah, me! Rick, come here. Rick! I'm getting paid by the minute, man. If I were you, I would hurry. I'm a capitalist. I'll take every dime I can. I'd like to share a few excerpts from one of my favorite books, Atlas Shrugged by Ayn Rand. What's interesting is in the last three years, my understanding is sales of Atlas Shrugged have exploded because we are living in the days of Ayn Rand. One of the things that has made Atlas Shrugged withstand the test of time and continue to sell hundreds of thousands of books, even though it was written more than 50 years ago, is just how relevant people find the message of the book to what they're experiencing today. Atlas Shrugged, Iron Man. There's certain writers that just have this vision of the future. Hi, Rand, the dimensions of the front of the Jeffrey's movement is coming in this country. in that book, the subjugation of the individual to the, to the collective, the crony capitalism and rent-seeking of big government, it's happening today. With all the government regulation, with all the government interference, and really the impact that all of this has had since the book was written, I think that that makes the message and story of, of Atlas Shrugged so appealing to people that embody the American spirit. This book is uh, one of the ten most influential books of all time, according to a study by the Library of Congress. 
was second only to the Bible. Atlas Shrugged is even more important now than when it was written decades ago. And people need to open their eyes and open their ears. The most important message that anybody should get from this movie is that you have to think for yourself. You can't allow other people to do things for you. You've got to get out there and, and make it happen. We want to really make certain that, that we take our time and capture the message because so many people have been inspired or influenced that what we're really attempting to do and what we aspire to do in part three is really have people who have read the book and have been trying to get other people to read the book to be able to walk out of theater and say, now that was Atlas Shrugged. It's going to be a great movie, it'll be the best of the three. In turn, are they going to say what we wanted to say? America was built on people creating things and being able to keep most of what they created and not have the government come in and steal it or tax it. Ayn Rand understood that in 1957, even before then. This movie shows you what America can be if we do this by showing you what America will be if we don't. The question is, do you own yourself? Do you own what you produce? Do you have a right to say what you want to say? Or does someone else, someone from the government, some crony capitalist that has cut a deal with the committee chairman, do they get to decide? That's what this movie is about. It is so timely given the debate that's going on in America today. I think Atlas Shrug is exactly what this country needs right now. So that was a little sneak preview we put together for you of... Uh... Uh, the truth is, 57 years ago, Ayn Rand wrote this book, this fictional book called Atlas Shrugged. Fictional time in America where an out-of-control government took what it wanted, where unelected bureaucrats were able to take over a citizen's land or property just by selectively enforcing laws they wanted to. She wrote about a fictitious time when the economy was in a tailspin. The only solution was more government rules and regulations and less control by private citizens in the private sector. And this fictitious story now, 57 years later, could have been ripped by, ripped out of the headlines today. Now, all is not lost, though, my brothers and sisters. It's not lost. Are you with me? Yeah. Heck yeah, that's what I want to hear. Because we don't all need to flee to gulch, gulch and save ourselves. Because it's groups like this, and it's people like you they're going to help make a difference. So first of all, give yourself a hand just for being here. Now, I don't have a lot of time. Um, I'm not selling a book outside, so uh, no reason to spend a lot of time here. But I have a message. And the message is important on this tax day. It is a message that's very clear, yet nobody in Washington, D.C. seems to want to hear it. They're because they're not listening. They don't think we can be trusted to manage our own health care. They don't think we can be trusted to educate our children. They don't think we can be trusted to choose our, choose our own energy resources. But I want to send a message from the people of America's heartland to the bureaucrats and the politicians of America's wasteland. And it is a message to President Obama. Yeah. And all the people partying in the White House and flying around the world on Air Force One. It is a message to Nancy Pelosi, <laughs> who wants that speaker job so bad so she can fly around the world on broomstick one. <laughs> it is a message to Harry Reid and the do-nothings in the United States Senate and the Democrats. It is a message to John McCain and your very own John Boehner and the rest of the White House. The Republicans in name only. It's a message to Hillary Clinton. Bill Clinton's wino! Wife in name only. <laughs> it is a message to the czars, the thieves, the looters, the moochers, the bandits, the bombs who are robbing us all for their own power and their own glory. You ready? It's not your money.
something. It is not their money. It's my money. It's your money. It's your money. It's not their money. Politicians, just because you people in the government can print the money, it doesn't mean it's your money. It's our money. And it's not your money to take over car companies and then sell them to foreign governments and foreign nationals for a loss. It's not your money. Or to force overpriced, unsustained solar energy. Or to give out Obama phones. <laughs> it's not your money all to make you feel good or to buy your votes. It's not your money. So what we need to do is we need to get the government out of our way so we can all succeed or fail on our own. That's right. See, we Americans, we can do it. I know I can do it. You can do it. We just want a chance to do it. We don't want the government in our way. We can turn this economy around. Heck, we're even smart enough to pick our own doctor our own health care. Yes. But we cannot succeed with the government impeding our every move and our every turn. Sisters, we will work and we will fight and we will vote and we must tell our representatives, each and every one of them, it's not your money. Ladies and gentlemen, God bless you. God bless America. And thank you so much for having me here. Thank you. talked about uh, the IRS. Have you heard of them? The IRS and this tax day.